You know, sometimes I wish I could go back in time. Maybe I could be a better person today if I had made different choices. Maybe I could bring back all the things I know now and slay some mad puss in my teens. Or prevent 9-11 or whatever. You know, a side project in between all the unprotected sex. Point being, there's no time machine. It has to exist only in the realm of fiction. Bad fiction. Personally, I don't even believe in the idea of fictional-styled time travel. I don't think it's possible. I might not be a physicist, but I am very opinionated. So that probably counts for something. So, maybe I can't build a time machine, but I can ridicule other people's stories for using it. <gasps> oh! Oh, hello Toriyama-san! I didn't see you there. And what's that? Two entire arcs centered around time travel? With additional interviews detailing your ideas on the overall implementation of time travel in your setting? Oh, who needs to be a better person when there's Dragon Ball? Let's get started. Today we're talking about timelines in Dragon Ball. I'm going to get really angry talking about this, probably. Definitely confused. When stupid animals get confused, they tend to get angry. And by the way, my explanation won't be canon, because the canon explanation is wrong. We'll get to that later, too. Alright. When you think about time travel in Dragon Ball, most of you probably think about the Cell Saga. There's also the Goku Black Saga and Super. There's also the manga, and then there's also the video games. I'm not going to cover the video games at all, because that's no fun. We'll stick to our cartoons. Let's start with Trunks and work our way forward. If I asked you, how many timelines are there in Dragon Ball? Some of you might say two, the future and the real timeline. Needless to say, this is nowhere near the final number. Let's try to think this through. The logic behind Trunks coming back in time was that Goku died, androids took over, blah blah blah. So in the original unaltered timeline, this is what happened. Goku beats Frieza, who survives and goes to Earth. Goku uses instant movement to reach Frieza and King Cold before they can do much damage, and kills both of them. Goku then contracts his heart virus, dies, and the androids kill everyone but Gohan and Baby Trunks. This is what is supposed to happen. That is Timeline 1. But this isn't the timeline that Future Trunks is actually from. It is, however, the timeline that the cell we see from the series is from. Confused? Uh, I hope not. We got a lot of shit to cover. In Timeline 1, Trunks goes back in time to warn everyone and help stop the androids, back to Timeline 2, which he made by going there. We don't see this happen. In this timeline, Trunks does not meet Cell in the past. Cell isn't there, beyond being a baby in a lab, because he hasn't gone there yet. There hasn't been a time travel event associated with him yet. Trunks then returns to Timeline 1, and destroys his own androids, but doesn't know Cell exists. Cell awakens and finds out that Trunks had killed 17 and 18 and can't become perfect. Trunks prepares to go back in time to tell Timeline 2 about how he saved his future. Timeline 1 Cell kills Trunks and takes his time machine and changes the date to travel back in time years prior to the events of the Android Saga. That Cell is the Cell we know. Sort of. But the timeline he goes back to is not Timeline 2. Remember, in Timeline 2, Trunks went back in time and helped take out their androids and save Goku's life. Now here's the weird thing. They never encountered Cell. Cell eventually woke up in that world with Goku and everyone still in it. We have no idea what happened to Timeline 2 Cell. The most logical idea is that he got found out and was killed pretty easily, with no androids to absorb and no time machine. Although since no one really worked up their power level that much in this timeline, who knows what happened when Bobbity showed up. But who cares? Point being, in Timeline 1, the real timeline, all the cast is killed. Trunks dies and Cell leaves to die in another timeline. Bobbity shows up, but no one's there. It's a nearly dead world. In this Timeline 2, we never actually see what happens at all. This brings us to Timeline 3. This is the timeline that Cell creates when he goes back in time, prior to when Trunks did. We also never see this one. No, that's right. I know you're confused, maybe even angry, but we never see it. You see, a timeline only shows up in Dragon Ball when someone travels back in time and creates a branching timeline. One unaltered, one altered. Just like how Future Trunks' timeline continues to exist despite him changing history. The timeline Cell traveled back to 
was one prior to Trunks traveling back in time. So in this timeline, that timeline one Cell travels back to, Trunks never appears because it's the one that was unaltered by Trunks showing up. Right? We don't know what happens, but presumably. Goku dies again, the androids wake up, but Cell is also there to try to consume them. We can probably guess that in this timeline 3, Cell absorbs the androids, kills the rest of the cast, since Gohan probably never trained like he did with his dead father, and Cell blows up the Earth or something. Who cares? However, remember timeline 1? This gets super confusing. But Trunks goes back in time, but despite being the same Trunks that went from timeline 1 to timeline 2, his actions split because there's different variations of his destination, and he goes to a timeline that is now altered by Cell. This is the timeline we see. Timeline 4. You better be happy with that, or I'd have to make another timeline to explain where this Trunks came from, so shut up. In Timeline 4, we know what happens. Gohan beats Cell, everyone lives. Timeline 1 Cell and Timeline 1 Trunks are there, despite Cell having killed him before he even arrived. No matter how confusing they may be. However, since Timeline 1 Trunks went to Timeline 2 and now Timeline 4 as well, the future Trunks timeline will be altered when he returns. Remember, in Timeline 1, Trunks came back, killed the androids, and was going to go back and tell Timeline 2 about it before Timeline 1 Cell killed him. That doesn't happen when he returns, and we see the difference. So, the future Trunks we know, despite being from Timeline 1, returns having been split by the Cell event that creates an additional divide yet again. Timeline 1 splits again, and we get Timeline 5. This is now the Future Trunks timeline that we are aware of, due to Timeline 1 Cell affecting another Time Traveler. Angry yet? I've always been angry. Well, buckle in, it's going to be dry and painful from here on out. Just like how Tommy broke your hymen in 8th grade. Toriyama isn't going to slow down, he's too excited. He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't understand he's hurting you. He's just a big dumb animal lying on top of his own franchise, mindlessly thrusting and grunting for 40 seconds till he rolls off, impressed with his own efforts and awash in amazement at what he's done. Because he just, he doesn't know any better. And you were too eager to let him do what he wanted. No one wins. It's bloody, dry, unsatisfying, and a memory that will only serve as a reminder to have higher expectations. Time travel sucks. Well, let's continue. This raises further questions, because remember, Trunks went back in time, went back to his own timeline, then returned to help with the androids. Now, thankfully, Dragon Ball simplifies this for us a little. In both the Cell Saga, and especially the Goku Black Saga, going back in time is treated like creating a door between two timelines. That is, as time passes in one, time passes in the other. As long as you abide by normal space-time, a new timeline will not be created. That is to say, if you go to the future and wait two years, as long as you travel back exactly two years after you left in the first place, it won't be counted as a new timeline. It's fucking stupid. This is good news. Because I would be livid. After all, in Timeline 2, Trunks came back twice. In Timeline 3, Trunks never came back. In Timeline 4, Trunks came back twice prior to Dragon Ball Super, where things start to get really fucked up. So if we were abiding by time travel at all, creating new divisions, we would be getting subdivisions of timelines each time Trunks hopped through this door. Timeline 1 would remain one timeline. Timeline 2 would subdivide into five timelines. One in which Trunks warned Goku but didn't leave. One in which Trunks warns Goku but does leave. One in which Trunks warned Goku, leaves but doesn't come back. One in which Trunks warns Goku, leaves, returns, but then stays, and one in which Trunks warns Goku, leaves, returns, then leaves again. And this isn't even factor in Super or the other timelines in which this also transpires, or the additional possibility of quantum states in which events did not occur, like Cell trying but failing to kill Timeline 1 Trunks or something like that. You still watching this shit? This is why you don't have time travel in your stories. It's a narrative device to be presented as a what-if scenario. That's the point of it. Time travel should never be the mechanical focus of your story. Never. Let's proceed. So thanks to this door shit, we still only have a mere five timelines. Timeline 4 is the one we see in DBZ. 
Timeline 5 is the future Trunks timeline we are most familiar with. By the way, we aren't counting episode of Bardock, so no time-traveling Super Saiyans fighting leotard freezes or impregnating ancient blue salamanders. Do you really want to count it? Good, good. Dragon Ball Super. Okay. Door rule still in effect. Spoilers incoming. The premise of the Goku Black arc is that the future is under attack by evil Goku. And Timeline 5 Trunks has to go back in time to Timeline 4 again to get help. Well, Timeline 6 Trunks. You see, something happened in the future. Goku Black showed up which, as a time travel event, split the timelines there in two. Time Travel 5 is this future Trunks timeline where Goku Black never showed up. Timeline 6 is another future Trunks timeline in which Goku Black showed up, met the Zamasu in that timeline, and then the two of them started making a... maybe more, who knows. So first, where did Goku Black come from? I love talking about this, because Toei actually had the release information trying to explain it. It's a major plot point. But even they don't understand it, because it doesn't actually make any sense. Allow me to explain. Alright, spoilers again. But Goku Black is actually Zamasu from the present day. As we just covered since Black showed up, Timeline 5 split to Timeline 6. One in which Black never appeared, and one where he did. Trunks from this new Timeline 6 with Black in it went back in time to Timeline 4 again. However, since he was from a new timeline with altered events, this actually altered the time stream again. The present split again into Timeline 4 and Timeline 7. 4 is the timeline from DBZ. Timeline 7 is a timeline that Black follows Trunks to, but also creates Black in the first place. What's, it, what's, what's that? Yes, it does make sense, in the same way that Trunks and Cell were both from Timeline 1. In the same way that Trunks went back after having met Cell and created a new timeline due to being altered by that event. That thing? Oh, are, 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 you, are you confused? Maybe angry? Well, I'm not stopping. The important thing is, Black goes back in time chasing Trunks. Black meets and fights Goku. This gives Goku, Beerus, and Whis the idea to figure out who Black even is. Recognizing his key, they go meet Zamasu in the present day. Goku and he fight for fun because Goku has a learning disorder. And this is the event that creates Black. Because Zamasu has been steaming about how much he dislikes mortals. And it isn't until Goku shows up that he gets the idea to possess Goku's body to obtain his broken, cheating Saiyan physiology. Black cannot exist without this event happening. Now, here's the part that gets really stupid. S stupider. There's another timeline split while all this is happening, but no one knows why. Because remember, Goku Black exists because they met. And more importantly, he exists because he was being investigated for being Goku Black. Which means that the events that happen later when Goku and Vegeta return from the future and confirm that Zamasu is indeed black, never occur. It's impossible for them to occur because this is what makes Beerus and Whis return to Zamasu and then Hakai him out of history. Goku even points this out, sort of, although it turns out Goku was actually confused why Beerus erasing Zamasu had not affected black yet. Confusion in this arc? Who would have guessed? So something happens and from that there is a split in Timeline 7. Timeline 7 remains the present timeline in which Goku Black arrived, caused the investigation of Zamasu, but Goku, Beerus, and Whis never followed up on the investigation for some reason. This allows Zamasu to eventually steal Goku's body and turn into Black, creating a timeline paradox in which he is responsible for his own creation, and there is no actual reason for the paradox to even exist. I'll point out for anyone stretching their brains, again, the problem here isn't the confusion over how Black could create himself, as stupid as that is. The problem is that the timeline that Black is from is a timeline in which he met Goku due to being investigated. Yet there is no second meeting between the two. That's Timeline 7. So whatever happened, it also creates Timeline 8, which is the one we see. Goku investigates Zamasu, goes to the future, loses, 
returns from fighting in the future and tells Beerus. They then confirm Zamasu murdered Guasu, and then rewind time, which doesn't cause new timeline somehow by the way, and stop this from happening. Guasu lives, Goku keeps his body, Black is never created, and Zamasu is destroyed. Hey, by the way, wouldn't killing Guasu just have made a halo appear above his head, since they were already in the Upper Realm, like how we saw in the Buu Saga? Eh, whatever. So we have no idea why in Timeline 7 Goku met Zamasu yet for some reason just never followed up on it. He just went back to farming for fuck all knows what reason. He had to have met Black in order to meet Zamasu, yet also had to either have chosen not to fight Black again, or failed, for him to have been able to exist in the first place. Since he's shown to be farming and has no reaction to being in Zamasu's body, it's implied that he's never met Zamasu in this timeline, yet that cannot be the case because the entire basis for the paradox is a meeting between the two. Now, you can make the claim that this was a completely unrelated timeline that Zamasu went to, one a year into the future, when he started using the Time Ring. But he only gets the Time Ring after killing Gowasu, which happens after the second meeting where he's killed by Beerus, so this also is impossible. But even if there was an explanation, which there isn't, it would still involve a completely new timeline, so we count it. Also, I'll point out that in order to gain an ally, Black went to the future to get another Zamasu, right? Yet, wouldn't this future have been his future? In other words, post-Universal Tournament and so on? The future of Timeline 7, of Super, not Timeline 5. At this point, the Zamasu that became Black didn't even know about Future Trunks, or his completely separated timeline. See what I'm talking about here? The second meeting problem isn't you or me not understanding events, it's the writer not understanding them. More importantly, that problem and now this problem of Black jumping into a completely unrelated timeline he didn't exist in is a product of marketing driving the logic of the story. They wanted a story involving Future Trunks and Evil Goku, so any decisions about an explanation are going to be driven with that goal in mind. Toriyama wrote this, but he doesn't understand it. Toei also doesn't understand it. I understand it. I understand that there's no actual logic supporting any of it beyond marketing Future Trunks and Evil Goku. And now, you also understand. Well, probably not, but at least we're all angry. Okay, more fun. Since all of this is true, and Goku had to meet Black and then either fail in the future, or have never gone there at all despite having a reason to, this means the future has to have split again, from Timeline 6 to Timeline 9. Timeline 9 is the timeline in which Black fought Goku, returned to the future, but either killed Goku, despite the fact that we see past Goku Black taking over his body, or never fought him again. We don't know which this is because Toriyama didn't realize he had created the circumstance in order for the entire arc to happen at all. Timeline 6 is the one we continue to see where Goku and Vegeta help Trunks, sort of but not really, destroy Zamasu. So Goku Black wins in Timeline 9, but fails in Timeline 6 for reasons that are not clear. Now, we're not done yet. Not yet, my darlings. Mm -mm. And don't get mad at me. You know, I'm just I'm just explaining this shit. No shoot the messenger. Now, Beerus Hakai Zamasu, which he claims should eradicate all Zamasus in all timelines. Black as well. But this doesn't happen. In fact, we never get confirmation that what Beerus guessed is actually true. It may be the case that the two Zamasus in timeline six, and now also nine, remained only because one was in Goku's body and the other was immortal or they remain because they were wearing Kaishin earrings. Or they remain because Goku Black was wearing a time ring, which was my theory at the time. When Goku gets confused as to how Black can be the Zamasu he fought, Black cites the ring as being the reason he can exist despite being erased. Which, as I mentioned earlier, seems to be trying to address two problems at the same time, while not explaining away either of them. It doesn't explain why the timelines would be different from one another, and why Black would have a time ring prior to being Hakai'd, and it doesn't explain 
why there's a future Zamasu that wasn't wearing a time ring after the point in time in which Beerus would have destroyed him. It also doesn't explain why future Zamasu wouldn't be erased when he isn't wearing a time ring at all. Further complicating this, we actually see this version of Zamasu kill Gowasu while no one is even around, while not wearing a time ring, which should not have happened if Beerus had destroyed him at this point or earlier, in another timeline. It's also like the logic of it is that since we the viewer witnessed one event first, despite it happening later in a timeline, it precedes the logic of what should have interfered with it happening in the first place. Or maybe the writers thought the viewers were too stupid to remember how time travel worked in Dragon Ball, and the entire problem was only there to provoke Trunks into explaining how time travel works to a shitty younger Trunks. The problem only exists so they can exposition time travel logic from Z to the audience. That's what it is. We are never directly told which of these is true, so we don't know if the other Zamasus across all other timelines were also erased or not. If they were, this would change all timelines, but wouldn't actually create any new ones since there wouldn't be any remaining where a Zamasu existed. However, whether or not all the Zamasus would vanish in mid-sentence or simply have never been born in the first place is unclear. Depending on how many thousands of years old he was, it could potentially create a butterfly effect that drastically altered every timeline. Whatever. I'll just assume that Beerus was full of shit. Bulba even got pissed off when Vegeta mentioned how Black had killed all the gods in the future after Beerus said gods killing gods affects every timeline. So I guess the series thinks he's full of shit too. I'm so glad all of this is clearing up. Okay, we're up to nine confirmed timelines that must exist. They must exist for any of this to work. And I pray, oh, oh god, I pray. There are people in the comments furiously typing about how wrong I am because of extremely complicated reasons that would take paragraphs upon paragraphs to explain. One, no, I'm right. I'm being very careful about my logic here. Two, you're probably not going to type anything at all because you're rightfully lazy and this is a stupid video. Yeah. Three, even if you do, this only helps to prove the point of this video, which is that you should be angry about time travel in Dragon Ball. Also, I would like to point out that the time rings the Kaishin use allow them to go forward in time, but not backwards, because that is a sin. Oh wait, it also lets them go backwards in time as long as they're following Trunks, and there needs to be a villain revealed to the main cast. Of course, right. There they can do whatever they want. Zamasu even kills a stupid dinosaur man, because Zamasu has a green thimble dick and it makes him feel like a big man. I bring this up. Because one of the major plot points was that Zamasu never collected the Super Dragon Balls to wish for all this to happen. He used the time ring to jump a year into the future. There, they were already collected, and he could keep repeating this to get as many wishes as he wanted before destroying them. But if he did this, wouldn't there be yet another Zamasu there who had gathered the Dragon Balls? If not, who gathered them, and why? Why are they all there? And if he keeps using the time ring to go into the future for more wishes, shouldn't there be many various Zamasus from all timelines competing for the same wish? He would have to skip one year and then wait around a few days, then use them so that any subsequent wishes wouldn't overlap the timeline and create the problem of the wishes being used up already. Well, no worries. None of this makes new timelines because shut up we said so. I guess they're only simulating a future by going to it, and then eradicating all life within that possible future by returning and erasing that possible timeline, but it doesn't count. What noble beings these Kaishin. But wait! But if this is the case, then Black going forward in time wouldn't be considered a time travel event, right? After all, he got there using the time ring. Then, what created the new timeline would be Trunks trying to fix a timeline that was merely a weird time ring simulation. Topping this off, it's really confusing that Black didn't know what a time machine even was until someone pointed it out. Yet later on, he tells Trunks that one of the reasons he made his plan was Trunks constantly trying to fix time, despite the fact that he had never met Trunks prior to his plan being invented. Man, Toriyama's a genius. Anyways, 
I bet by now you're like, wow, I'm glad this is wrapping up. I've got to masturbate and there's only so many hours in the day. Oh, oh, oh no, no, we're not done yet. No, not even close. You see, when the arc is over and Black is dead, Zamasu is dead, my interest is dead, Vegeta and Goku are nearly dead, but fuse into a version of Vegeta that's wearing a combination of clothing the characters wore in the Boo arc, despite the fact that Vegeta is now in a completely different outfit, because that's what his toy looks like. But then he dies, figuratively. Zamasu is dead because he turns into a Windows tiled wallpaper. The whole universe is also dead. And Goku further complicates the timeline by introducing a second god of everything. Dead, dead, dead. When the arc is over and we're free from the demon of time travel. We then have Whis open his stupid fucking mouth. Whis claims that when Beerus erased Zamasu, he created a timeline in which Zamasu was never defeated. Don't ask me how this works, because one, there was no time travel involved since Beerus did this in the present day. And two, we see that Beerus' assumption about destroying gods affecting time wasn't even true. The only way I can make sense of this logic would be if the idea is that since Zamasu's transformation into the Black was part of a time paradox, by interrupting the paradox, even without using time travel, that counts as interfering with time? Now I want to ask you, what is this new universe like? In ours, Zamasu gets erased, right? In this new timeline where Zamasu isn't erased, when Beerus wrenches Zamasu's arm down and tells him not to get ahead of himself, does Beerus's hand just shoot a puff of smoke and then everyone forgets about the situation and goes home? This is often the problem I have with these things in time travel stories. You can't bullshit and say that in one universe everything is exactly the same except you're a millionaire or you fuck Stacy back in high school. Things happen for reasons. And the reasons for events can't exist without further changes, which themselves require yet more alterations to exist. Quantum states work on a subatomic level and apply to the state of subatomic particles. Not how wet your dick got in junior year. And not about whether Beerus and everyone else just decided to just give up on shooting Zamasu when the barrel was pressed to his face and just go home. So the idea that Beerus created a timeline in which he did not erase Zamasu by erasing him is enraging, stupid, and unnecessary for the plot. I almost get the impression Whis only says this because the writers thought it would be funny. Maybe this is the origin of the elusive Timeline 6 that Black was from, where he got investigated but was never erased for no reason, and Goku just decides to give up and go back to farming. It was because they were already in a paradox that had no origin. And Beerus had the audacity to interrupt it, which is what created it in the first place. A double- no, no, wait. A triple paradox. Fuck you. Can't make big assumptions though, gotta stick to my guns. So unfortunately, this Beerus Erectile Dysfunction timeline is our new Timeline 10, because we says that it exists. It has to exist because we says it does. Even though there's no reason for it to exist. Thanks, Super Writing Staff. Appreciate it. Now shut up, please. Well, Tim Timeline's down. The arc is over. What an amazing start. What a mystery. Who could Goku Black be? You know, his energy feels like Zamasu's. They fight the same way, have the same social security numbers. They say and believe the same things. They have the same goals. They have the same speech patterns and mannerisms. They dress in similar ways and use the same techniques. Could it? Could, could it be Zamasu? Well, he's always angry and talking about murdering mortals and the superiority of the gods, the justice only he can impart, and he's sweating and evil-looking and keeps having to be restrained from trying to murder anyone that talks to him about his future plans or the existence of mortals, and Gawasu comments that his tea tastes like literal evil and is constantly having to stop him from murdering or thinking about murdering mortals, and he nearly killed the seer of all things while trying to learn about Goku and the Super Dragon Balls in an effort eerily similar to the hypothetical plan you would need to create the entire paradox in the first place. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, they're together and he tried to kill you? Well, I mean, it could be anything. Maybe Zamasu wished for Goku's body as a servant. That's it, that's it. Oh wait, it's not that? Well then clearly this random black man did it. Get him, boys! 
Oh, I love America. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. Good thing Detective Weiss was on the case. Boy, he sure is fucking white and from a family that's in control of everything. Here, hope nothing bad happens there. You know, it's weird. Zamasu wanted to exterminate all humans. But killing humans just makes their spirits go to heaven. Which is physically located in the universe. So all he really accomplished was moving them slightly. And he also killed all the gods according to him. And none of the angels or Zeno seemed to care. So maybe there was no one there to judge or reincarnate anyone? But killing all mortals also doesn't stop evolution from occurring, so all the lower lifeforms would eventually turn back into sapient lifeforms and then start the problem over again. Seems pointless. Also, since Black got to this point in time using the Time Ring, which isn't supposed to create new timelines, and even seems to erase them when he leaves them, doesn't this mean that his entire plan would have vanished the moment he stopped utilizing the time ring and it pulled him back to his present day? It's... It's almost like the entire arc was a poorly thought out mess that only existed to market future trunks again. Anyway, the arc is over and oh wait, almost forgot! Whis has another good idea. He wants to take Trunks and Mai to another new timeline. Timeline number 11 to a timeline prior to the entire arc even happening, but still set it in Future Trunks' general timeline... thing. This raises... numerous issues. One, Goku Black, according to them, is still in that timeline. We says he'll just have Future Beerus, prior to Shin dying, erase Zamasu again. Now, I will point out that a few sentences prior to this, he admonished Beerus for creating a new timeline himself for erasing Zamasu. So doing this makes new timelines, right? So doing this again would create Timeline 12, where it didn't happen. Again, using the show's own logic. Also, if we take them back too far before Goku Black arrived in their timeline, it would also create another timeline in which a new Trunks and Mai arrived, but Goku Black doesn't. But Whis doesn't mention this, so I'll ignore this possibility. Furthermore, everyone says there will be an immortal Zamasu there too. This makes no actual sense, because that Zamasu was from the future and was recruited after Black showed up there, and became immortal by using the Time Ring to wish on the Super Dragon Balls that no one gathered. So no, he wouldn't be there yet. Well, he would, like Zamasu would, but he wouldn't have become immortal. But they claim that he is, so he promises he has some sort of way to deal with an immortal that's better than an urn. But he doesn't say what it is, and Han waves the entire problem away. So, the whole arc could have been resolved instantly if Whis had done something. Which he chose not to do. Yet he also scolds everyone for creating the paradox in all these new timelines, as he himself suggests to create a new timeline, and is then responsible for creating it. How reassuring. Fun fact, in the manga, Shin had already died, which erased Beerus, so they actually had to go back in time even further to fix Shin from dying as well, creating even more timeline splits. But I will not cover those, because fuck you. But anyway, in timeline 11, Whis encourages Beerus to erase Zamasu again. Traps the other Zamasu in something he doesn't specify, and brings timeline 7 Trunks and Mai with him, despite the fact that another Trunks and Mai are already there. Mmm, two Mai's. Did you know that Mai is 67 or more years old here? She was older than the cast in Dragon Ball, and it was retconned that during the training prior to the Android Saga, the Dragon Balls were used to wish the Pilaf gang young again. Off screen. So Trunks is nailing a woman that's older than his mother, but who was lusting after him when she had the body of a 10 year old. Oh man, some progressive stuff going on here. Some hot, progressive stuff. Are those police sirens? I should get back on track. I wanted to point this out. Remember the time rings? One is silver, and is the one they use to go to the future but not make new timelines unless it does, right? The green ones show up when a new timeline is created. I don't know if they actually work or not, they're just there. Guasu has five green time rings at the end of the shit. 
meaning five new timelines in addition to the original one. The arc started with just four. I've often wondered, what the fuck do they think these rings correspond to? I'm guessing one is Trunks going back in time, maybe another is Cell going back in time, and another is... Trunks going back in time to help against Black? And one for Beerus getting rid of Zamasu by using sheer logic we're up to 12 fucking timelines, maybe 13, 14, or an infinite number. You see, there is now a timeline in which there are two Mai's, two Trunkses, where Beerus attempted to erase Zamasu, but didn't, because he did in another one, according to Whis. So as a result, this whole thing starts over again. Since Zamasu didn't get erased, he can proceed to become black again. Therefore, there are infinite new timelines as a result of this decision, because each exacerbates the next. I guess eventually there would be a universe with billions of trunks and mice in it, so they could not only just overwhelm black with sheer numbers, but create the most heavily inbred planet Earth across all timelines. Yay! And we're not even done. Because in the manga, it's revealed that one of the rings was created before every timeline I mentioned. That's right. Timeline 1 was not the first timeline. There is a timeline 0. I'm including this because it seems like core information, and not something you could just write away as being a minor difference in details from the anime. It also sounds like something stupid they might use in a future story, so I'm going to use it. Something I have not mentioned is that in addition to all of these timelines, there are 12 different universes. Fortunately, and my stars and garters, thank goodness for this, universes are a subcategory of timelines. So when you change time in one universe, it splits all of them. So we're now up to 13 different timelines across 12 universes, splitting all of them with all time travel events being caused by Universe 7, Goku's universe, other than one. Supposedly, the very first green time ring was created by a time traveler from the 12th universe. This time traveling machine was obtained by the Kaishin of their universe, Ugg, who was promptly purchased by a woman with bad taste in shoes. Oh, wait, wait, never mind that. But Black and Zamasu stole this after killing Ugg, along with all the other Kaishin of the various universes, and it was erased with universes, Universe 7's future timeline number 7. However, it still remains in timeline 8 where Super is currently, so it still exists, along with lots of other timelines because it was never captured and later erased. Now, who this time traveler is and what he did, we don't know yet, but something I found interesting is that Toriyama had claimed that Kaishin only live about 75,000 years. Meaning that the first time travel event had to have happened not too long ago, if Ugg here was involved with it, right? Another interesting thing is that there used to be four other universes prior to Xeno wiping them out, which again, we know nothing about. So whether that was related, who knows? Who knows? There are 12 now, paired 1 to 12, 2 to 11, number 6 to number 7, and so on. Which means the current numbering system changed either after those four universes were erased, or the current set of universes were created well after the original four were wiped out. Whether the four universes were erased prior to the first time travel event or afterwards, we don't know. But it's possible that if they were erased within the last 75,000 or so years, they may still exist in another timeline, in Timeline Zero. Eh, it's food for thought. But my favorite part of all this is that no matter what universe you're in, when time travel happens, you get a ring. And this includes the Splinter universes we don't see, in which the time travel event doesn't happen. Remember that shitty rule? There's a universe where Beerus never raised the Masu despite doing so. There's a universe where Cell went back in time but Trunks didn't kill Frieza, and so on. So, Timeline Zero the original Prime Universe, as far as it is aware, has never had a single time travel event, because it's the core timeline. Yet somewhere, in every universe in Timeline Zero, there is a box containing five green rings that no one can explain the origins of. Technically, 
Every timeline should be populated with an infinite number of green rings that destroys their entire universe. Thanks to Whis's stupid Beerus erasure rule, the moment he did that, every timeline should have just exploded. But if we ignore that, we still have at least 13 different timelines that we've counted. And I still don't know what the fuck Toriyama thinks each of these green rings is for. Maybe it stands for each one of these fucking videos I made so far. Oh, now I get it. It's like the ring. Each time you watch it, it just creates more of itself. Number five is the start of a shit paradox because I didn't delete it off my hard drive when I had the chance. Hope you're angry. Get out. Young niggas in the wildlife, criminal